All right, uh, today's Torah portion, we're in my kits. And we're going to be in, it starts in Genesis 41. So this Torah portion, it tells us the story of Joseph's interpretation of the Pharaoh's dream, which leads to Joseph being uh, second in command in all of Egypt. Uh, that's what we see in Genesis 41, verses 1 through 7. So we see that uh, the Pharaoh, he has a dream of, of seven good-looking and healthy cows and seven ugly and skinny and unhealthy cows. Um, and then we, he has another dream. These, these dreams, they're connected. They're, you know, they, they're meaning the same thing. He has another dream of seven ears of, ears of corn, plump and good, and seven ears of corn, scorched and thin. So Joseph interpreted these dreams to mean that there would be seven years of abundance and seven years of famine. We see that due to a famine in the land of Canaan, Joseph's brothers travel to Egypt to buy grain where they encounter Joseph, who at the time is second in command over, over Egypt. After many years apart, his brothers did not recognize him. Joseph then orders his brothers to go back to Canaan and bring, bring his brother Benjamin back to Egypt. Joseph's brother returns to Egypt with Benjamin. In this Torah portion, it closes with Joseph uh, detaining Benjamin. So I want to point out that up to this point, Joseph had a, a very difficult life. He had been kidnapped. He had been betrayed by his own brothers. Um, he was sold into Egypt as a slave. He was falsely accused of attempted adultery and, and, and imprisoned into, in a dungeon. His life was following the rule of if anything can go wrong, it will. And so far, everything had gone wrong for Joseph. Still, through everything, though, Joseph held on to this unshakable confidence in God. And even though everything around him was chaos, he just kept looking to God and believed that God was working through it all. He never fell into depression because he always believed that he was right where God had placed him. How many of us need to hear that this morning? That you are right where God has placed you. His plan and his purpose, his will for our lives is greater than our own. God has you right where you're supposed to be. And whatever that reason may be, he's trying to get something to you and not take, and take something from you. You see what Romans 8.28 tells us. Now we know that all things work together for good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. All throughout the past few Torah portions, we see that Joseph refused to, push, to be pushed around by the circumstances of life. And instead, he looked to God for strength and encouragement. He kept on believing. We see that God used all of the difficulties that Joseph had been through to bring him to a place where he could be used to accomplish God's will. I want to also point out this. Through all of, his, all of this, Joseph had a ton of self-control. The famine had caused his brothers to travel to Egypt to buy grain, and after they had arrived, Joseph used his authority to send them back and return to his brother Benjamin, who was his full brother. The only, the only other son of Rachel. But when they return with Benjamin, we see that Joseph was overcome with emotion. Genesis 43, verse 29 through 31. Then he lifted his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, and said, This is your youngest brother whom you mentioned to me. Then he said, May God be gracious to you, my son. Then Joseph hurried out because his compassion grew warm and tender towards his brother, so that he wanted to cry. So he went into an inner room and wept there. Then he washed his face, came out, and controlled himself. Serve the food, he said. So I just want you to imagine for a minute these, all these emotions that Joseph was feeling. See, he was reconnecting with his brothers, and, and it probably brought him a lot of joy, but it also probably brought him anger because they're the same ones that betrayed him. It's likely that he was glad to see Benjamin, but he still dealt with painful memories of being hated and abandoned by his own brothers. And we see Joseph, he, he knew that he was getting overwhelmed and not wanting to ru ruin that opportunity to reconcile with his family. He went into another room. After he removed himself from the situation, he was able to control his emotions and return to the company of his brothers without causing a fight. 
How often have you found yourself in a similar situation where it's hard for you to keep your head, keep your cool? I think there's so much for us to learn from this, from Joseph here. It's how to handle those situations because we've all been in a heated argument where we did something or said something that we truly regret. So when we notice that we're going to get to that point emotionally, we should practice the same self-control, which is the fruit of the Spirit. This is, what, this is what we see from today's Torah portion. I know that it's often easier said than done. Trust me, I do. I have a six-year-old and a nine-year-old. But what we can do is what Joseph did, and that is to step away from the situation. Take a deep breath, vent, weep, pray so that you can regain control and resolve the situation peacefully out of love. So hopefully this insight in today's Torah portion can help you if you find yourself in that situation. Now let's continue celebrating Hanukkah and uh, hear a word from Pastor Mike this morning. Amen.